Thou view, thou view, thou view, thou view, thou to view, thou vow 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 to view, thou to view each other's movies, even though we don't always like them, but it's okay because we love each other and movies too. Hey, and welcome to Vow to View, your daily planet podcast all about marriage and the things you make each other watch. I'm Elise Daly. And I'm Scott Daly. And I'm the host. Wait, no. What? T- together. Together, I guess we are the Daily. Why do you keep changing the intro? I don't know. Sometimes you just got to keep things exciting. It took us like 10 episodes to be able to say the dailies at the same time, and now you're changing it up on me. That's not fair. Okay, here we go. I'm Elise Daly. And I'm Scott Daly. And together, we're We're the the Dailies. Dailies. And I'm the host. And I'm the... What what does that make me? You're my sidekick. You're the Robin to the Batman. That's mean. It's true, isn't it? If anything, I'm Nightwing. Who's Nightwing? See? Yeah, you fail. You you, you can't can't even keep up. See, no one even cares about Nightwing. No one even knows who Nightwing is. It's Batman and Robin. Who cares about Nightwing? You want to be the one that nobody cares about? Is that it? Is Robin? No. You're wrong. No, no, I'm not. It's just Batman and Robin. Elise, what? What are we doing here? What is this? We're debating comic books. This, yeah, because we both read comic books. You read one comic book. I have read three volumes. This is what you do. I have read three volumes. Thank you. Has read three volumes of Paper Girls. And it's a good comic. And so she has decided she's a comic book reader. Elise has has in her life beaten one video game and declared herself a gamer. I am a gamer and a comic book lover. (laughs) I am the epitome of your wildest fantasy. You know what, babe? What? I'm not going to gatekeep you. You are a gamer and you love comic books. Thanks. But you don't know who Nightwing is. I don't need to know who Nightwing is. Are you eating right now? No. Why is there chocolate in your hand? It's in my hand, not in my mouth. So am I eating? No. You took it out of the wrapper and it's moving right well, now towards you know your what? mouth. No, it's not. It's going back in the wrapper to prove you wrong. Good. There. Maybe that's why I did it. Huh. Hey, Elise. Oh, no, I'm not going to be <laughs> controlled by you. I'm going to eat the chocolate if I want the chocolate. At least this is the podcast where each week both of us pick a movie and make the other one watch it. And then we come on here and we talk about it. We yeah. talk about love. We do. We talk about love. Maybe some marriage. Maybe love we learn a little bit about each marriage, other. Marriage. We've like already done a that. Horse We've already done that one. Carriage. No one cares about that joke anymore. Um, you do the same joke all the time as we're driving down the road. Excuse me? Live on campus, at least. What's live on campus? I don't know. Why don't you read it correctly? And it says live on campus. Well, that's confusing. And I blame the English language for that. Yeah, our English language is rather confusing. We've talked about that. Elise. Yeah. What's up? Today is a special day. It is? It is. Oh, what's so special about it? I'm asking you. Why is today special? Well, I think it's special because it's our three-year anniversary. What have you done to make it special is the bigger question. We went to dinner. Mm-hmm. Ah, who chose the dinner place? I... Who made the reservation? <laughs> Who's done all of the planning for today? Hmm? Okay. First of all, let's who bought <laughs> flowers for herself today? <laughs> the funny thing huh? is, Elise is using huh? being being on on recording to air grievances right oh, now. Oh, I'm. It's not a festivist today. So let's. This is not the festivist let's day. Let's set the record straight a little bit here. Oh yes, please. Let's do. Today is not our anniversary. It's our three-year dating anniversary. It's You've got multiple anniversaries in your life. We have a marriage anniversary where we got married, obviously. But the fact that we've known each other and been dating for three years as of today, happy anniversary, is important. I think once you get married, the most, the anniversary that you celebrate is your wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we'll go to dinner for our dating anniversary. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to celebrate it and make a huge deal of it. We're drinking champagne right now. Please. Prosecco. The people in Champagne would be so ashamed of you. I made that exact joke to you while we no, were in the you car. Didn't. Stop taking my material. You know what? Mine's on a recording, so who gets credit for the joke? I think it's me. Will you please stop eating on the podcast? Please. I'm doing it to spite you. 
Anyways. This is supposed so, to be a magical time in a relationship. <laughs> and you're just ruining it. <laughs> it is magical. At I least, love it. At least it's not this uh, this cruel to me off off mic. She just she just turns it on as soon as the microphones come on. Mm, it's a good show, ain't it? What are you doing right now? Drinking on air? Drinking not just water. You're drinking alcohol. You are drinking on the job. Why? Shameful. <laughs> okay. Can we move on now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I'm just playing. I, see, I don't know if the people at home know that and they're like, damn. I'm just playing. I'm just playing, guys. I'm damn. kidding. But I'm not kidding about actually buying flowers today. Yeah, but, you, but that was not for myself. It was for, it was for our the house. Home. We're having people over this yeah, weekend. Yeah, we're hosting. So you bought flowers. Because what's more beautiful than fresh cut flowers in a room just to liven it up, give you a little bit of freshness and color? Is sponsored by flowers this week? Tulips, yes. Uh, spe- Brought to you by Texas Tulips. The specific Go tulip and pick industry. your own tulips. Big in tulip. Texas Tulips. Big Tulip has bought us. So Trader Joe's tulips. We are not we are not really talking about our anniversary this episode though because I thought we were. No. Oh. We're talking about our sisters. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's a uh, We like them too. It's sister week here on the podcast. Sister, younger sister. Younger sister. Never knew how much I missed you. It was good. Isn't that a Tia and Tamara? Maori. You know, one of them has a cooking show right now or some show. I didn't know Her that. Her cookbook is at our book fair right now. Which and I one, saw Tia it. or Tamara? Pretty sure it's Tia. Yeah, I think it's there's Tia. Always, there's always the one I liked more. And then there's Taj. The little one? Yeah, the brother. He's on that <laughs> show, Baby Daddy, oh, that I like and you didn't like. terrible show. I mean, it was, I think, it fun. Um, yeah, so my little sister's getting married this weekend. Yay, Melissa! From the time... Everyone's hearing this. It will be two days away. Um, and I'm excited. And we thought, let's have an episode of the show where we honor our little sisters. Or my little sister. And I guess we can throw yours in. I need to pause really quick. And I'm sorry to bother all of our listeners with this. Did you turn off the air? Yeah. You did? Uh-huh. Okay. Sorry, guys. Just got to make sure of these things. Because otherwise... Then the air conditioner comes on, and I have to start the whole intro over again, and then it just becomes this big, huge thing, and I just didn't want to have to do it over again. Does it become a big, huge thing? It does. It becomes this big, huge thing. So I'm sorry for interrupting our story about Melissa. (laughs) Continue. At least still Melissa's thunder there. Um, Yeah, she's she's getting married. Well, she okay. So Melissa is technically already married. Yes. Um, Legally. Legally, yes. This is just uh, the family getting together to celebrate it. My big old... I have... Uh, four uncles. Mm-hmm. My mom has four brothers. It's a big old Italian family, and do you wish you had four brothers? No, no. Um, do you wish you had any brothers? Yes. Oh, you do. Yeah. Wish I had a brother. I love my sisters. I wish I had a brother. I got I my cousin. A brother I got DJ. Too. This is a brother, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so everyone's coming into town. We're celebrating Melissa, and we thought, hey. We got a podcast. Let's celebrate Melissa. Yeah. And then we felt a little bad and we're like, oh, we got Elise has sisters too. Yeah, I've got great sisters well, too. Well, sisters. No, I've got great sisters <laughs> I'm too. Just kidding. Um, so we thought we both have younger sisters and we thought we would pick a, what their favorite movies were. And we don't want to, you know, like completely brush off our older sisters too. No. So I just want everyone to know that we do have older sisters too and we love them very dearly and we will honor them also. Yeah, we're gonna but have we're to not going to do it back sister. to back because no. then it's like, oh, well, you're only doing this because you did the younger sisters this week. Yeah. We've got to make it special. And so we're going to do uh, our little sister's favorite movie this week and then we'll honor our older siblings later. Sometime in the future. Sometime in the future, yes. So your younger sister, yes. Meredith. <clears throat> My wonderful younger sister, Meredith. Yes. What What is her favorite movie? So there's actually quite a few movies that came to mind whenever I thought about what Meredith's favorite movie would be. And there were quite a few, again, yes, that I had had in mind. And so when I texted her just to kind of confirm, she sent me back a list of ones because she wouldn't necessarily say she has a favorite, but there are a lot that she just really, really likes. And the ones that I had thought came to my mind were all on the list. But um, 
one that she had sent me that I hadn't necessarily thought of, but I think just is more of her personality out of everything is the devil wears Prada. And I say that because my little sister, um, she majored in fashion merchandising in college. And so she's mm-hmm. always been huge in the fashion, fashion design world um, in, I know, not in college. I think it was the some, right after she graduated her internship for her senior year of college. She went to New York and she worked for this magazine um, up there called the editorialist. Runway. No, not runway. She worked for the editorialist magazine, which was a newer magazine at the time. So it wasn't quite as presti- prestigious as runway was, but it was kind of the same idea actually. Um, and so when I saw all of them, this is the one that made me think of Meredith the most because Number one, it's just a fun, happy movie. It's easygoing, just like my little sister, but it also is marked very much by her interests. And so I understand why she likes it. And so when I think about it, I think about my little sister. So The Devil Wears Prada. All right. That's what I choose. Um, So that movie actually stars Meryl Streep and Anne Hathaway. It came out in 2006 written by Aline Brosh McKenna, who also wrote 27 Dresses, Morning Glory, We Bought a Zoo, and co-creator of one of our favorite shows right now, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Which is a fantastic show. One and if you really want to have a good musical show, you should watch that. But that's because it is a musical. Yeah. yeah um, Every episode. Hey, Elise, remember when you refused to admit that you liked that show? Yeah, I... It was just the first couple episodes didn't grab me. It took me a while to get into it. And then after that, I it's really not enjoyed even it. True. It's just I watched a show by myself. I told you you were really going to like it. And you decided that because I thought you were really going to like it, you couldn't like it. Now you're creating a story. No, thing. I'm not. No, I'm not. You watched half of the first episode and decided you mm-hmm. didn't like it. And then you went back months later and watched the entire first episode and was like, oh, yes, this is literally right Did up I? my alley. Yes. Huh. Well, going back to the movie, that mm. my, my sister likes The Devil Wears Prada. Uh, it was actually based on a novel by the same name, which I've never read. And my sister has also never read. But uh, the movie, if you have not seen it, is about a smart but sensible new graduate lands a job as an assistant to Miranda Priestley, the demanding editor in chief of a high fashion magazine. And the intern uh, or new job she's not an intern the one that gets hired is Anne Hathaway Meryl Streep is the editor-in-chief and my favorite character in the whole show or whole movie yes is Emily Blunt the other assistant the first assistant the first assistant the second I don't know how they did the the older assistant the one that had been there for longer um and that was the first movie that I'd ever seen Emily Blunt in and she was a hoot oh my gosh (laughs) I loved that character. Whenever she talked about her diet and she was like, I'm on a diet and I just, I don't need anything except when I feel like I'm about to faint, I eat a cube of cheese. <laughs> That's like the funniest thing. And I don't know why. And I know it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> and you like, I shouldn't really laugh at that because I know that there's, you know, people that legitimately do that because they want to go to Paris and fit in all these clothes for this industry. But, um, I just, I loved her and but that's, that started my love for Emily Blunt and this is I'll go into it a little bit later about how this movie actually has two people that I'm not necessarily fond of their acting career in it but Anna Hathaway I do really like her in this movie and this is one of the other movies that I actually enjoy Meryl Streep in and I'll tell you why I enjoy her in this in a little bit but um this, I appreciate Anne Hathaway a lot more. I like Anne Hathaway a lot more, and I really enjoy her in this type of role. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's why I picked it. I liked it. I'm I'm really glad that I rewatched it. This is one of my I go to sleep watching this movie movies mm-hmm. that was around for a while, and yeah, I enjoyed it. I liked it a lot. Have you you seen it before? Yeah, I have seen it before. Okay. I, I think this movie is fantastic. And this movie came out, I was 20, it was 2006 when this movie came yeah, out? Yeah, 2006. So it was right up your alley, right? It was like perfect yeah, age for perfect. you to come Yeah, perfect. 21. Yeah. Just, 
you were right into your like craze of I want to be fashionable <laughs> and you're buying all of the hit clothes. No, but this was one of those that definitely was. I remember I did not see it in the theater, um, but I remember it coming out and I remember watching it and I remember t- poor 21 year old Scott was still like, I can't I can't let anyone know I like this movie. They'll Aww. judge me. They'll judge me for liking this movie. I wouldn't have judged you. I know. It was st- I was st- stupid. I was still a kid. 21. You're still a kid. You don't know anything. You are. You're still a kid. It's it's dumb. It's like it's dumb to be embarrassed about liking a movie. This is a, a well done movie. I like yeah. the story. Um, the the the, the performances are great. Mm-hmm. Um, I think my favorite character is Stanley Tucci, just because I love Stanley. Stanley Tucci, Tucci is he's just fantastic. amazing he's, and he's, everything. Yeah. The cool thing that that I think this movie does is. It both shows why fashion is important while still taking a lot of pot shots at some of the more problematic elements of fashion. Mm-hmm. Like, like it, it is definitely brutalizing the idea, the ridiculous idea of dieting to, to mm-hmm. the extremes that some of the women in this movie have to diet. It is not like the movie is very much not saying that's OK, but it's also it's also taking time to highlight why this stuff actually does mm-hmm. matter. Like you can tell, um, I don't, I, I'm guessing the book was written by someone who has pretty intimate knowledge with the fashion industry. And you can tell that this is, this was kind of a, an outsider love letter thing, like, like positioning yeah. the story from the perspective of someone coming into this who has never cared or never, uh, understood it before. And it, it's, it, it, that perspective allows you to both like, nail it for the things that it deserves to be nailed for mm-hmm. while still um showing the importance and um i think it does that mostly through the stanley tucci character which is why i like him so yeah. much and i really appreciated that part too when um there was that scene with meryl streep and anne hathaway that you're referring to about how people that don't necessarily consider themselves to be that into fashion or think that fashion is that important. But there's a a scene with a sweater and Meryl Streep goes off about how she, Anne Hathaway's character didn't even realize the importance of how that sweater came to be at even the store that she bought it at. That was probably like, uh, like this huge chain store that had things that were extremely discounted or like something. I mean, I shop at J crew. I love J crew. It looks like a J crew sweater, but you know (laughs) that the things that are at J crew are only there and they make those stylistic choices because of the things that they see on the runway and people buy that and they think, Oh, I'm not into fashion because I just shop at, these like department stores or these stores that are in the mall that are not, you know, like $600 labels. Yeah. And people have to realize that the ideas for those brands and how they're cutting and the fabrics they use are very much dictated by New York fashion week or, or those sorts of things. And even like the things that you would buy, you know, at thrift stores or something had come from that at some point. And so why you say, yes, I'm not maybe necessarily into fashion, I mean, the the choice of the clothes that you're wearing, they did. They came from somewhere. And yeah, it's all trends yeah. and someone setting the trends and that yeah. trickles down eventually. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it's interesting. Yeah. Um, so talk to me about Anne Hathaway <sighs> and about Meryl Streep. Okay. So have we on this podcast laid out your completely irrational hatred of these I do not like. I do not like Meryl Streep. I... I appreciate and enjoy Anne Hathaway a lot more than Meryl Streep. And I will go see an Anne Hathaway movie far more often and be more enthusiastic about it than a Meryl Streep movie. And the thing Why that I, do you hate um, Meryl Streep? It's not that I hate her. I think she's overrated. And I read a really good article about it a couple weeks ago because when the, all the Oscar stuff was coming around, my sister, my older sister actually knows that I don't like Meryl Streep. And I don't think that she's necessarily fond of her, too. Um, And so she sent me an article that someone had written. And I think that it really kind of sums up the type of actress that she is and why I think that she is considered to be overrated. And there are definitely movies that I like her in. I liked her in The Devil Wears Prada. I really liked her in Julie and Julia. And those are the two that stand out to me. The most is ones that I really like her in and will go and watch over and over and I don't mind it. And if I'm thinking about those two movies, that's because those are movies where she had to be 
extremely over the top character actor. And I think that is the type of actress that she is the best. But because people think that she is so big and so grand all of the time, they think that she is more than what she is. Um, and I, they were the article was very interesting and I hadn't necessarily thought about it, how when you're an actress on TV as opposed to an actress on stage, when your face is on the screen and it is so small, you don't have to be big because the camera and the screen make you big. And so it's more of how you can be a realistic human and bring that humanity to it as opposed to the loud, dramatic, over-the-top, boisterous person. And that is what Meryl Streep is to me, is she's always trying to perform and she's always trying to be big, that she's never human. And so I just, it's, and she's always tied to roles like, you don't, the movies that she's in are very much like, no one, it's just, it's like, you you don't necessarily think about the movies as being something more than, oh, this was nominated because of this, as opposed to, oh my gosh, this was a great performance. Was this nominated? It's never like you recognize the movie for the quality. It's you recognize the award and then you're like, oh, was this really nominated? What else was? And it's never, it's just like... How is any of that her fault? Because people continually feed the fact that she That's is, not her fault. Well, she can stop taking the roles. Like, if you actually want to be... Acting? No, I mean, like, seek out roles that show that you can be subtle and you can be great without having to be over the top and i think what i mean uh, what, it's just like for example when we were watching arrival this week and it was like amy adams was on the screen and you saw her hand tremor like i don't think that that is anything that would be so subtle of something that meryl streep would do i don't think that she it's just it's it's always this big show for her. And I think that there are roles like in Julie and Julia, like in The Devil Wears Prada, where that fits. And that's why I enjoy her in those, because that's the type of actress she is. But when she's trying to play these roles that it's where you need to be subtle with it, and she's not, it really frustrates me, and I don't like to watch it. But, I mean, that's... And that's what she's in most of the time because people want to put her in things because they're like, oh, she's always nominated. She's so good. She's so great. And then when you put her in those and it's just like... Like what? Like The Post. I hated her in The Post. I hated her. I don't think that's a subtle role. I don't think that that's trying to be subtle. That's a big role. I think that you had to be like... Just because you have a big speech doesn't mean that it's... She wasn't human in it to me. She and it's just my response to all this is watch Sophie's Choice. That's my response to all this. Um, and I think that that was probably the root, and maybe she had one good performance out of that, and the director like, got her to it. And like then it the was idea, just like the idea that it's her fault because she's overrated, as in as in she had control over how people rated her. I don't like she picks roles that she, I mean she does all different kinds of like she'll do Into the Woods and she'll do Death Becomes Us and mm-hmm. she'll do all these zany mama mia roles and, and then, then the, she- and that's fine like let her do that but don't nominate her for it because it's just her like the fact that she was nominated for best actress for the devil wears prada astounds me because that is not something number one that normally would get that and the only reason that they nominated her for that was because it was meryl streep but had another person fault. been in it But it's frustrating to me because the only reason they're doing it is because of who she is. And it's not because she acted well in that. I mean, I thought she did a great job in Devil Wars Prada. So, um, I mean, awards are subjective and she is a very popular actress that gets nominated a lot. That's absolutely true. It's like... And it might not be fair. Jennifer Lawrence is the Meryl Streep of the generation. And I have 
become more and more frustrated with Jennifer Lawrence because, again, I do not think that she is a great actress. I think Meryl Streep is better than Jennifer Lawrence. I will give you that. But I, but I think it's just... Anyway, is a fun movie. And as zany as some of the outfits are in 2006, it still has nice fashion. Man, I love the story. Man, people weird shit in, 20, in 2006. Yeah, and Anne Hathaway. Those hats, Anne. She actually, you know, they um, talk about it in the movie about the fact that she came to the office and they were going to give her some clothes and she um, wasn't the sample size and she actually gained weight to make herself a size six when you know most women in america if you're a size six they're like happy they're a size six you're doing great yeah and she was a size six at the beginning of the movie and everyone was dissing the fact that she was that and then during the course of the movie she did lose weight in order to get down to the size four that she says she was at but like even seeing that i mean it she wasn't large and no, it was just, just like, like she looked like Anne Hathaway yeah it, it was just very interesting I like I like the fashion industry and I understand why my sister enjoys it and she loves shopping and so like she has a great thing going for her and I understand why she likes the movie but um yeah this is one of those where it has two people that I'm not necessarily fond of but they joined together and produced something that I will happily watch and watch over again. And again, there are movies, there are a lot more movies that Anne Hathaway is in that I like. I love The Princess Diaries. I love The Intern. You know how much I love the movie The Intern. I would watch that like for a week straight. Just, uh, Anne Hathaway teaming up with older people as Elisa's kryptonite. I know. I just really like old people. <laughs> I think that's because I'm old at heart but yeah so it's devil wears prada for me <laughs> and most importantly for meredith and most importantly for meredith mm-hmm. yeah so i'm glad that she liked it i did not make you watch forrest gump because i know that you've already done a show about that on daily planet and you don't yeah. really like the movie what was the title of that show again oh yeah forrest gump sucks yeah but she loves forrest gump and um that is actually what I had thought that she was going to pick originally because I know that she always talks about how that's her favorite movie. And so when I talked to her about it, she did send me that. But I decided since she'd already talked about it, too, and you don't really like it, I wouldn't make you watch it again because Thank I'm you. kind and I love you. You're kind as long as the person's name isn't Meryl Streep. I'm, I mean, I'm kind to her. I'll give her money if she's decent. <laughs> what? Yeah, um, no, I, I enjoyed watching this movie again. Um, I think it's a fun movie. Um, I mean, it, it's always like there's there's whole, all different kinds of fun to it because like it's fun seeing people get good at their job. That's always like a fun mm-hmm. thing to watch. You're like watching someone do good work, mm-hmm. like get good at their job is fun. Um, and then, of course, like the there's a lot of emotion tied behind. She's destroying her life. Mm-hmm. And this this idea that everyone else around her has committed to this thing and has basically just been okay with the fact that their lives are going to be destroyed. Like Stanley yeah. Tucci says 18 years and I can finally be in control of my own life near the end of the movie when he's finally going to get to be a, a partner on something. And of course that doesn't happen. And his story is really tragic because at the end he says, um, she'll pay me back one day. Yeah. You sure about that? Yeah. And and the answer is no, she's not going to. Of no. course not. She's uh, Miranda Priestly, that's her name, right? Mm-hmm. Um, completely self-absorbed, selfish, terrible person. Um, well, but that's the thing, is that for women to get to a position of power like that, they have to be very, like, cutthroat dry. And when women do that, they're exactly how you described, like, horrible person and you know she probably had some things that were not necessarily the best decisions no she's not a great person but yeah i agree that that the depiction of her is very different yeah to be in that position of power basically demands that of you because you're gonna have people um trying well to the same decisions could have been made by a man and they would not be perceived necessarily the same way 
it's very it's a strategic business move and so yeah i mean if it's if if a man did that to stanley tucci's character i'd still call them a bad person well i just i but, think that I mean, there is a lot of the things standard. in general too it 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 has that and i mean so, the reason she had to do that in the first place was because she was an old woman and they they wanted to replace her with a mm-hmm. younger woman because that's it what was we have not to that do. much younger yeah. it didn't look like yeah anyway let's move on this week we are brought to you by Rufino. <laughs> We're not champagne, prosecco. but prosecco. You probably heard it when Elise decided to fill her glass in the middle of the podcast. Why and, not? And the fizz went right into the microphone. Also brought to you by my little sister's company that she works for, Rank and Style. What's the address for that? Uh, rankandstyle.com. Rankandstyle.com. Sure. Com. It's a really cool website. It's basically, where runway for websites. They shop for you is a curated top 10 list of different categories so let's say you need to get something for your mom and you don't know what to get for your mom they'll have a list that comes out probably around mother's day of top 10 gifts to get for your mom for mother's day or for your um husband for christmas (gasps) or other things you know if you want men's loafers for your dating anniversary or for your dating anniversary they don't have one because you didn't request it and you can request your own top 10 lists and so then it will let you know the items that you can buy it's a really cool site so if you haven't checked it out check it out rank and style rank and style sometimes i say things really fast and people don't understand me so i wanted to be sure and enunciate that okay thanks we will be right back what do you think of yeah well, you know me. Give me a full ballerina skirt and a hint of saloon, and I'm on board. Mm, but do you think it's too much like... Like a La Croix from July? I mm. thought that, but no, not with the right accessories. It should work. Where are the belts for this oh. dress? Why is no one ready? Here. It's a tough call. They're so different. Mm. <laughs> Something funny? No, 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 nothing's, you know, it's just that both those belts look exactly the same to me, you know, I'm still learning about this stuff and, uh... (laughs) This stuff? Oh, okay, I see. You think this has nothing to do with you. You go to your closet and you select, I don't know, that lumpy blue sweater, for instance, because you're trying to tell the world that you take yourself too seriously to care about what you put on your back, but what you don't know is that that sweater is not just blue, it's not turquoise, it's not lapis, it's actually cerulean. And you're also blithely unaware of the fact that in 2002, Oscar de la Renta did a collection of cerulean gowns, and then I think it was Yves Saint Laurent, wasn't it, who showed cerulean military jackets? I think we need a jacket here. Mm. And then Cerulean quickly showed up in the collections of eight different designers. And then it uh, filtered down through the department stores and then trickled on down into some tragic casual corner where you no doubt fished it out of some clearance bin. However, that blue represents millions of dollars and countless jobs. And it's sort of comical how you think that you've made a choice that exempts you from the fashion industry when in fact You're wearing a sweater that was selected for you by the people in this room from a pile of stuff. And we are back. And it's time for my movie, or should I say my little sister's movie, Melissa, Melissa. who's getting married this weekend. Congratulations, Melissa. And Tamara. Yeah, congratulations, Melissa and Tamara. I'm sorry, I'm making this all about my sister and not her wife. That's bad of me. Um, Yeah, so... um, when, when we had this idea to do this, like the, a movie popped into my head right away um, that I knew, I knew if I asked my sister what her favorite movie was, this would be her answer. And that was Darren Aronofsky's 2006 movie, The Fountain. And I was, I was right. Melissa loves this movie. I, Melissa has loved this movie since the first time she saw it. She actually is the one that, that uh, convinced me to, to give this movie a shot for the first oh. time because I did not see this movie in theaters when it came out. Um, I was I was told about it from her, and I, I gave it a shot, and I loved it, too. That's cool. Yeah. So The Fountain, like I said, 2006, was written and directed by Darren Aronofsky, um, who, if you didn't know, also does Requiem for a Dream, Black Swan, The Wrestler. The Wrestler? Mm-hmm. What is that? 
It's a movie that directed by Darren Aronofsky. About a wrestler? Yeah. Like WWE Mickey Rourke. wrestler? Mickey Rourke. Yeah. Oh. Like a, yeah. It's, okay. it's, it's It's actually a very similar movie to Black Swan. It's about a performer who's so, like, uh, committed to his craft that he risks his life. And uh, it's really sad, actually. Wrestlers are just performers? Yeah, wrestling's not real, babe. What? I don't know. Um, I'm sorry. It's not. It's not real. What? Yeah. They're just... Oh my boy. whole life has oh just boy. now changed. Oh boy. Oh. Um, we also did last year's Mother. I did not like a that movie, movie that Elise did not I like. I hated um, that I liked movie. it quite a bit, but I completely understand why you did not like that movie. There were a lot of things, but mostly it was because me and my introverted self was on sensory overload and I almost had to leave the theater. And that's kind of that's kind of what Aronofsky does. His movies are very visually intense. And I think this one is no exception. Um, the Fountain tells the story of a modern day scientist, Tommy, struggling with mortality, desperately searching for a medical breakthrough that will save the life of his cancer stricken wife, Izzy, um, which is true, but also a, a gross simplification of what this movie is. There's actually... Three different timelines, one in Spain during the time of the Inquisition, where a conquistador is looking for the Fountain of Youth. Um, there's the modern day time, and there's a metaphysical future time where um, a character is floating through space with a tree trying to get to the afterlife. Um, and this is basically a story about death, about mortality, mm -hmm. and about grasping with that. Um Izzy, the uh, the woman that's dying, is played by Rachel Weiss, and she has written a story called The Fountain, which is the past story in this movie. So we go back in the past and we see Hugh Jackman, who plays Tommy, um, is playing the conquistador, and Izzy is playing, uh, and Rachel Weiss is, is playing the, the queen that he is uh, undertaking this journey for. But um, that part of it is her writing the story to reckon with her own mortality. Um, in the middle, we have Tommy desperately trying to find a cure for his wife before it's too late. And then in the future, we have Tommy with the tree of life itself, which is, has become Izzy, um, trying to, to preserve her and keep her alive in time to go to heaven or the afterlife or whatever you want to call it. Um, I, I love this movie and I forgot how much I love this movie until we sat down and watched it. And it's so, it's so wonderful. Um, the music, the score is probably the best part of this movie. The score is I one of the most that. beautiful things I've ever seen. Um, it has Aronofsky's, all Aronofsky's flourishes, his, his, his weirdness, his overbearingness, his visual sense. Um, the performances are okay. Um, I like Hugh Jackman. He doesn't like knock it out of the park here. Um, he does fine, but I, I think the movie is so visually arresting that I almost don't care about um, some okay performances from the actors. Um, and I asked, so I was I was curious. I was curious why I, I felt like I had a pretty good idea, but I was curious why Melissa, my sister, liked this movie so much. So I asked before, her. Before, sorry, go why ahead. before you read it, why did you think that she liked it so much? Um, I think Melissa is. My little sister has always had, I don't want to call it a preoccupation, but she's always been interested in um, the idea of um, mortality. And like Melissa had a bent in her teen years where she got, I think it was younger than teen, where she got really interested in like learning about the Holocaust. And she read. I did too. She read just about, I think, every book written on the Holocaust. And she was I did really. Not do that. And she was really into exploring it and finding out how it happened. My my sister is a very uh, empathic person. She is she very much feels she is what empath. other people feel, and um, so she kind of really like it, it likes to explore that kind of those the 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 roughest parts of of human existence because um, she she feels all that and it works really well on her. So this is a movie. Um, about dealing with death and dealing with losing someone and, and dealing with you yourself dying. Um, and it's all those things kind of wrapped into one. And I think there's, there's something just generally appealing about that to her. Um, 
But she didn't say that when I asked her. Huh. I wonder if she'd agree with that if she's listening. But she said uh, the actors, the imagery, especially the yellows. There are a lot of yellows in this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, the dang soundtrack, the interwoven three stories, the mix of ancient Spanish American with space and meditation, the repeated dialogue with the relationships, especially with death. So she did kind of mention death. And then, of course, lastly, my my little sister, the first time my sister saw this movie, she was still in the closet um, and she had not come out yet. But she said, I saw it before I came out and I remembered wanting so bad to be close enough to make a woman's hair stand up on the back of her neck like happens with the tree in this movie, which I thought was just my adorable little in the closet sister that hadn't fully uh, come to realize her her sexuality yet. Um, Finding something in this movie, like some connection, identifying with the Hugh Grant character as he he struggles to save his wife. And mm-hmm. I think that's great. I think that's really great. And um, and then she says, I've seen it 10 times. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Only 10? Yeah. Come on, Melissa. You got to see it more times than that. But no, um, you know, the, like my sister has always been into like I, I like I don't want to call them artsy movies, but I guess so. Like metaphysical type of uh abstract type films like mm-hmm. this um that that tell a, tell they, they definitely tell a story but they tell a story in a very different kind of way it's not um start to finish it's not your standard a type plot of, line yeah it's not yeah. your standard type of of three act structure type film it is a different type of movie that that leans into visuals more than it does dialogue and and traditional storytelling that's mm-hmm. the type of movies melissa has always been drawn to and this is this is absolutely no exception and uh anyway what did uh you'd never seen this movie before right i had never seen the movie but i do remember that i guess a year or so ago was it at mondo con one year that you bought the vinyl yeah the soundtrack because they had redone one or they, they did one it, yeah. they pressed it and so um i knew that you had bought it and i listened to it and i was like man this is good and so I had heard that because of you long before I'd even heard of or seen the movie. And so I had appreciated that. And um, I'd actually never heard of this composer before. And I was looking at some of the other ones that he did. And they, a lot of them, you know, he does the Darren Aronofsky movies. Mm-hmm. He did Black Swan. He did Requiem for a Dream, which I love the Requiem for a Dream music. That's something that I always listen to. Um the soundtrack for movie station at school. <laughs> and I used to, a couple of years ago, I'd play a game with my kids and I'd give them tickets as a reward if they could guess the movie that it was from. And this one would always come on. And obviously no kid that's in the fifth grade would know that it was from this movie. And if they did, I'd be like, Oh my gosh, you saw this movie. Did they um, answer? Uh, well, they're probably too young now, but they use the Requiem for a dream song on the Lord of the Rings, the two towers trailer. Yes. Um, so did any of them answer that? Cause they're even no. too young for that. Now. No. Um, they did for the most part. No. Um, what did they know? It was a lot of the Harry Potter stuff. They knew Lord of the Rings stuff. They knew there was like the blockbuster things, but it was always this one kid and he's off. He's actually, you're not supposed to have favorite students, but you know, you always have favorite but students. You do. Just like and you have so, favorite children. Yes. Right, mom? Yes. The middle children is child is always the best. Um, but yeah, he's actually one of my all time favorite kiddos. Um, and not just because he knew movie scores, but he was a really fun, fun student. He had a lot of wit to him that made the fact that you're an adult in a classroom and trapped with 25 trapped. other children trapped uh, you love kind your of, job. i i do um but anyways so do, do you know this score was not nominated for an academy award can i know you, can you believe that it's this is a crime yeah and i kind of wonder if it was something to do with i don't know all of the like things that will disqualify a score because like the arrival sound score was never nominated. And yeah, that was because another that one. one song was not an original song. I know. And it was just like everything, though, was so beautiful. Mm-hmm. And then to not nominate it because they used one that was not original. It's the rules. You got to have just, a cutoff somewhere. I, oh, yeah, it sucks. But 
I, I get but, it. I, I don't think this was disqualified. I think it just wasn't it nominated. It just wasn't nominated. Because it, wa- it did get the Golden Globe nomination. Okay. Um, so. Well, anyways, so I loved the score and the movie was okay. Um, out of all of Aronofsky's films that I've seen, I still think I like Black Swan the best, but then I would say The Fountain is the second. Um, and then Requiem for a Dream and then Mother. I just, I did not Bottom. like Mother for a lot of different reasons. But um, actually, I, I quite enjoyed it, this one. Um, I think the three different storylines, it wasn't as obviously straightforward at first because there were so many different jumps. But I think mm-hmm. by the end of it, you know, I had kind of had at least a, a good part of it figured out to the point where it, if it wasn't completely figured out, I at least was able to grasp the main themes of the movie, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and so I really enjoyed that. Yeah, I mean, like, sometimes... like. I think I think the reason why this movie confused so many people uh-huh. is because the characters kind of swap, right? So like, yeah. in, in the past version, Hugh Jackman's playing the character, but that character is a stand-in for Izzy because mm-hmm. I mean he dies at the end of the and turns into the tree at the end, but the tree is her very clearly in the later parts. So I think that's what confused people a little bit yeah. that that like they're assuming that because all these three characters are played by Hugh Jackman, that he is the same person in each, in each one. Story. And that's really not I can understand the way that. it is. Yeah, I get that. Um, the thing that like this movie did not perform very well and this movie did not do that well critically. Um, some critics really loved it. A lot of critics like dismissed it as nonsense that didn't make sense. Um, and Aronofsky after this movie kind of stopped um, taking as much chances um, because Black Swan is a movie that he didn't write. The Wrestler is a movie that he didn't write. It really wasn't until Mother this past year, so 11 years, that he really mm-hmm. did something really out there again. Really and, original. Uh, him, and, yeah. and of course, um, <laughs> it did not perform financially very well at all. At least Mother performed well with the critics, but financially it was a disaster. Um, but And it, I think that's a kind of bummer because I do think this this is there are movies that reward multiple rewatches um for for different reasons there's movies that like are just fun i think devil wears prada is a movie that's a fun movie that you can rewatch multiple mm-hmm. times just because it's one of those feel good type movies it makes you feel happy yeah um and 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 this is a movie that i think rewards multiple rewatches because i think you can learn something new each time you watch it yes um and and what i really quick question because i don't sure. know this off the top of my head and i don't know if you know this off the top of your head so going back to movies that he had done completely original by himself so this one is one he wrote and directed it Mm -hmm. so it was original to him mother was like that too was requiem for a dream because i'm only going off of the ones that i've seen Um, or was that something that he hmm. had taken and worked with on someone else i feel like he did not so he wrote it's based on a book um he wrote the screenplay or he co-wrote the screenplay with the author of the book um and he has a movie that came out before requiem called pie that he also wrote. Um, that's a fucked up movie. So yeah, I mean, his his first three. So yeah, he did he did Pie. He wrote he did Requiem. He wrote um, he did this. But it was not he original. Wrote. He adapted. Correct. He adapted correct. Requiem. He wrote The Fountain. So correct. he didn't adapt anything. And Mother he wrote. Correct. Right? Okay. So. Requiem for a Dream is a movie that while I appreciated it and I know that it had a lot to say, that is something that it is hard for me to rewatch. You know, it's just like it is a tough movie. Just the life experiences that everyone's going through. It's just like that is that is difficult for me to be able to see. Yeah, it's, I mean, um, it's, it's a, it's a which, movie designed to be that way. That, and I mean, yes, he, he does that a lot. I think Mother's yeah. a movie designed to be painful to and, watch too. And yeah, and so I'm thinking back to all of the ones I have seen. Black Swan, while he, I guess, did not write the movie or even adapt the screenplay, is something that I could rewatch, but I guess it's not as much of his hand in the entire process. I mean, direct. But yeah, so I guess maybe if I'm going off of like the movies that he has had the most control over, 
the fountain is probably the one that I could rewatch and appreciated. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't something to where I was just completely like my body was in a sense of disgust and yeah. turmoil to where I can't do it again. Yeah. And that's where that's the point that I got to in mother, which is why I don't want to watch it again. And that I was nearing that point yeah. with Requiem, especially towards the end. I was just like, this is a lot for me mm -hmm. to be able to handle. And so, um, and this was a passion one, project for yeah. him. This took, he, he took five years to do this. Um, he started in 2001 and the movie was released in, in 2006. And, um, this was a movie that's very important to him. And I really think like um, uh, the wrestler and black Swan are uh, his most mainstream films by far. Mm -hmm. And I do not think it's a coincidence that after the failure of the fountain, um, at least uh, amongst other people that that's where he steered his career to is more, um, more mainstream type films yeah. that which i mean it's so funny because uh, black swan is a crazy ass movie um but that that's what that's what mainstream darren aronofsky looks like is mm -hmm. black swan um well and then it has natalie portman in it who is amazing right and in that movie was phenomenal like She's great yeah i really like natalie portman we want to talk about some good actresses natalie portman going back to amy adams those two are really good. Yeah. Who else do I really like right now? Blunt. I like Emily Blunt, but I haven't seen her like in something serious to where I feel like she's taken on something necessarily challenging. Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman's good. I think Emily Blunt's taken on a lot of challenging roles. Like what? Like uh, Live, Die, Repeat. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why? Because it's an action movie? It doesn't. Yeah. I haven't seen it in a long time. I haven't seen it in a long time. I did appreciate her as an action hero. Yeah, though. she's great. She's she was awesome. really good. She's a badass. And she's someone who I would not have thought of as an action hero. And she did a really good job. I will say that. Mm -hmm. She played alongside Tom Cruise like a real woman would. <laughs> and that takes a lot. So what else about The Fountain? Um, man, if, if for some reason you guys have not sat down and watched this movie, do it. You might not love it um, as much as Melissa and I do, but I, I really think this is a, a, a movie that, that should be watched. And I'll say I liked it this time. I feel like if I rewatched it a little bit later, a couple times, I might enjoy it more. If this I movie... think that the more, like what you said, the more that you watch it, the more you'll understand it yeah. and the more you'll appreciate it. And so if and it's a one and done, you're probably not going to get yeah. as much out of it or appreciate it as much. If this, if they ever play this in a theater, like if they, if they do a screening, we need to go. Cause I've never seen this on the big screen. And mm -hmm. this is the type of movie that I would love to see on a giant television. It would be really pretty movie screen. It would be really um, pretty. It's so beautiful. Like even like the, when it gets into the future stuff, it gets really like metaphysically trippy, but even like just how the movie and the, the modern day stuff is shot with um, the, 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 the funeral with the, the snow on the ground and the mm -hmm. earth beneath the snow. Oh, it's so beautiful. This movie. I forget what there. There was something though with that snow scene, where I wanted something to happen and it didn't. And I don't remember what it was. And I meant hmm. to say it because I was thinking it. And I was like, "Oh man, they should have done this, but they didn't." Hmm. And I I meant to say it out loud so that I could have re recalled upon it. And then okay. how do you do it too? But I don't know. So I guess we're gonna have to watch it again. I guess so. I guess so. Let's go. Let's go right now. I don't know if we can go right now because we still have some other things to do, but I think we'll just have to watch it again sometime. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's it for The Fountain. Um, I hope we did your movie justice, Melissa. You know, we've been talking about for the other movies, things that we've learned about each other, but we didn't necessarily go about things that you might have learned about my sister after watching the movie. That's did true. You, did you learn anything about my sister um, after... Watching Devil Wears Prada, knowing it was one of her favorite movies. I mean, it, like, it's like, it's not so much stuff I learned. It's that this fit my understanding of her. Um, you, like, your sister is very into fashion. You can tell by the way your sister dresses how much she is into fashion. Meredith is the um, most fashionable yeah, of us. And 
she, I mean, it does not surprise me at all that she liked this movie that, that, that is this kind of love letter to the industry while still taking some shots at it that, mm-hmm. that are deserved. Um, but is this love letter to the industry that, um, shows why it's important and how it's important and, and that it's, it's okay to care about these kind of things. Cause mm-hmm. it is, it absolutely is. It's an industry and it's a, it's a hobby and it's like the, the, there, there are so many people out there that want to write off fashion and style and this, these things as if they're like super, superfluous and, and yeah. girly things. And they're like, no, it's like, no, stop it. That's it's like, an influence on almost everything that you have in your right. life, whether you realize it or not. Right. The yeah. way, the way you project yourself to the world is important. And that, and I mean, part of that is, is taking care of yourself and grooming. And, and part of that is, is how you dress yourself. And that is, that matters. That matters. Mm-hmm. Um, even if you want to pretend like it doesn't. And that's what this movie says, I think. That's part of what this movie says. Yeah. And uh, and that does not surprise me that that's a message that, that Meredith gets behind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wonder, how, what, how does Meredith feel about Meryl? I don't know. Pro, are Meredith, we pro-Meryl? You the... know, I haven't asked Meredith what she thinks about Meryl. I'm pretty sure Adrian is kind of... Adrian's anti-Meryl. I Adrian no, is anti. Sure I don't know if she come. is as anti as I am. Mm-hmm. But... We com, you know, we consistently discuss our disdain for Meryl. <laughs> disdain! Oh my god! Mm. Uh, how dare yeah. you get nominated for awards? Anyway, it's, it's not that. It's it's all of the things I've already said. It's all of those. But I think also with this movie, it does not surprise me that this is something that Melissa would like. And when I think of Melissa, I think of something like that is very analytical and something that can be interpreted in a variety of ways. And like this movie, the more you watch it, the more you understand it. Mm -hmm. And I think Melissa likes things that are complex Mm -hmm. and likes things that provide discussion because she likes to be able to discuss different people's viewpoints and understand things better because of it Mm -hmm. and i think that's exactly what this movie does yeah and so i think that that you know like like what you said it doesn't surprise you that meredith would like that movie it doesn't surprise me that this is something that she would like because it very much fits her personality yeah i i really like i least surprised person in the world when i was right that this is the movie she picked so well I, i think that you told me before like whenever we had had the soundtrack that was playing, you're like, this is Melissa's favorite movie. Mm-hmm. And before it was even confirmed. Yep. So, you know, your sister. Well, I do. I do. It's another thing although, it tells me about you. Although, would I be able to accurately pick Cindy's favorite movie? That is a question. I don't know the answer to. Mm. We'll have to find out. Yeah. Um, well, we'll f- I'm not going to, I'm not going to spoil my pick. Cause I'm gonna have to think about this. That's good. You've got time. We do have time. All right. Um, so last week's question for our discussion question. Yeah, last week's question. Are we question. to that? Yeah, can I yeah, bring that yeah, up? Yeah, we're, okay. we're there. So uh, we were asking everyone, if you have a sibling, what film do you immediately think of when you think of them? So you're having a hard time with Cindy right now, but some people were able to think of a movie that came to mind with their sibling. Mm-hmm. And I will say also, I cannot think of one that immediately comes to my mind with my older sister as well. But I think it's for a different reason because my older sister loves movies, yeah. like not to the extent that you do, well. but it's one of those things where it's like she likes so many, I could not pick one. And yours is, I don't know if she likes as many. Cindy likes movies, but so, she's a mom and she doesn't get to the movies as yeah. much anymore. So, but I, um, I can think of, I, I definitely know what Teenage Cindy's favorite movie yes. was. I don't know if it's the same anymore. So we were just wondering if you have a sibling, which one do you think of? What might be their favorite? Or if you're an only child, how about a close friend? But I think everyone that shared this week actually shared a sibling. Yeah. And so uh, first off is Molly. And she said that the movie that she most closely associates with her little sister is, funnily enough, Hook from last week. Um, so she said we, that they did not watch it together, but that often her and her best friend must have watched it at least once a week for several years. And so, um, it's a great movie, Molly. I really approve of this one. Not that you need my approval, but, or your sister needs my approval, but I very much enjoy this movie. And I think of my sisters too, whenever I, I think of this movie. So yeah. Uh, just Matt. Who's that guy? 
Okay. Just Matt. It's Who's just, just it's Matt? Just, it's just Matt. It's just him. Uh, my co-host and good friend Matt says uh, it, it, he thinks of Judge Dredd in Mortal Kombat when he thinks of his brother, Daniel, who is also uh, a we know regular who those people podcast are. guest. Yeah. Um, this also was one of the least surprising things I've ever read. It was like Mortal Kombat and Judge Dredd, of course. That's a very classic uh, Freeman siblings fun movies to watch. Judge Dredd is different than the movie Dredd. Correct. Right? Judge Dredd is a Sylvester Stallone one that came out in the 90s. Oh, your man Sly? Yeah. Oh. It's a great movie, babe. So we have Prof V I, so Prof 6. Just say Prof. Prophecy. He changes Prof. the other part of his name like every week. So well, why Prof. would you do that? That's so confusing. I know. It's not nice, Prof. Okay. Well, he's got three siblings, and so he actually shared one for each. And first, uh, sister number one is Digimon the movie. Digimon. Because she just monsters. loved it. <laughs> as much as him, which is why he got to watch it so much as kids. Which I think is something true, you know, like the more that your older sibling or one of your siblings likes something, the more that you watch it. So hopefully it's something that you like too, which thankfully for Prof is something that he enjoyed as well. Um, and they also used to wake up at 5 a.m. to go downstairs and watch Captain Planet. He's a hero, gonna bring pollution down to zero. I approve we of already that. sung this for the podcast? You know I what? feel like we have. Anytime Captain Planet comes on, he deserves his song. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they watch Digimon afterwards. Man, that heart. Power guy really got the short shrift there, huh? Yeah, he did. I can make a tsunami. I can make this monkey like me. Poor thing. Uh, Prof's other sister liked My Neighbor Totoro. Yeah, that's a Studio Ghibli film. It sounded kind of like one. And it's the movie that she always wanted to rewatch because she loves the cat bus, which I don't know the cat bus. Because I I've know never the seen cat bus. Um, Is the cat bus kind of fun? Yeah. We are going to have to sit down one weekend and just pound out some Ghibli movies. Is this the one that they're showing at the Draft House? Yeah, all month. Yeah. They're yeah. showing a bunch of different. The Mononoke? Princess Mononoke, yeah. Princess Mononoke, yeah, that's the one that you said was really good that you liked, right? I like, I like that. I mean, I like them all, but... And Kiki's Delivery Service. Uh-huh. I feel like I've seen Kiki's Delivery Service you might have. before. Howl's Moving Castle. Mm-hmm. Uh, my Neighbor Totoro. Totoro, sorry. Yeah. Oh, um, I'm sorry I pronounced that wrong. And then Prof's last sibling, his brother, liked Pokemon Jirachi Wishmaker. Sure. It's his brother's favorite Pokemon when he was a kid. Um... Man, his brother's got a permit now. And Uh-oh. I'm saying that's scary because... Everyone be careful. Everyone be careful. I I feel your pain because as soon as I started realizing some of my old students had permits, I realized the world is a much more dangerous place. <laughs> um, But, yes. So, cross that, that three siblings. Yep. Kevin says their little sister watched the Lord of the Rings movies over and over again. Nonstop. All three. Over and over again. Um, Kevin, your sister sounds pretty cool. Don't get any ideas. What? No, that's she's probably really young. That's terrible. I know. Don't get any ideas okay. on our anniversary. Okay, moving on. A little bird. A birdie bird. <laughs> what? His brother uh, and him bonded over whatever happened to be in the 7 to 8.30 cartoon time slot before school. So Digimon, Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z, Zoids, Yu-Gi-Oh! Like Rufio, only I don't think that's how it was. So it's a lot of anime. Um, Did you ever watch Yu-Gi-Oh? I didn't. Do you know what Yu-Gi-Oh is? No. It's like a... It's a bids. It's an anime cartoon about um, like a playing card game. Like, you know, the Pokemon... Trading uh-huh. card game. It's like a game kind of like that. Oh. But the characters in the game, the characters in the show play the game against each other. And it's like really ridiculous and intense. Oh, well, all of these shows are combined for him into cheese TV, which, you know, like what's better than something combining all of your childhood nostalgia with cheese? With cheese. Oh, if only it was cheese in, a, sk- in a, a can that you could spray in your mouth. Like in the Goofy movie, man, that really made me want to try canned cheese. Gross. And I did. I tried it. I tried canned mistake. cheese because of a Goofy movie. Mistake. It was not a mistake at the time. I really enjoyed it. Um, Vegeta says the third Pokemon movie, the one with the dogs. Don't know what that is. Only saw the first Pokemon movie. 
which I think was the one with Mewtwo. I think so. I never saw the Pokemon movie. Man, movies. that got dark. It was a dark movie. Did it? Yeah, there's like Pokemon getting their So there was no sun, there was no daylight. I don't... It's uh, a bad joke. It's a real I know. bad joke. I know, uh, I'm sorry. Read the next answer. Tildy uh, said that his uh, sibling movie was the live-action Popeye, which I forgot about this movie. Can and you do a Popeye interpretation? Give me some spinach. Um, I forgot about how much I like this movie. And I used to watch this too with my siblings. And oh, really? Yes. Um, because Olive Oil was... Mm-hmm. The mom from The Shining, Mm -hmm. which was the first time whenever I saw The Shining, I was like, who is this? She looks familiar. And we realized it was the person from Popeye. So I know I saw Popeye before I saw The Shining. Um, And then it had Robin Williams in it, who we watched, you know, Hook from last week. And Mm -hmm. I love Robin Williams. And the I forget who played the mean sailor that was the nemesis. I forget who that was, Uh, but he was he was kind of creepy to me, but. I remember watching this movie, and we really liked this movie as my family. We didn't watch it as much as some of the others, but it. I never watched it with my family. I've we seen really it enjoyed once. it. So I was so it's excited goofy. that he brought this up because oh, I forgot about how great it was. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Free Buddha says Percy Jackson, the Lightning Thief, will really annoy his brother. So he's going to say that. That's a good old sibling relationship right there. Uh, they enjoyed the book series and read it on road trips across the States. Then they were hyped and actually really excited about the movie when it came out. Um, those books got really popular. Did they, they stopped. They are they, still actually they pretty made popular. Two movies, right? And then they kind of um, just stopped it. I think so. And isn't this Rick Riordan? Isn't that who wrote? Sure. I think that's who it is. You're he the kid's writes, book expert. I'm almost a hundred percent positive that it is him. And he has this new Greek gods, series that has come out that is very popular that I keep seeing the books on and Percy Jackson is not as popular among So he's moved on to the new He has the and new he's hotness. got a lot of stuff that has been coming out lately but um TMS's movie is so fetch Scott it's just like the most fetch out of them all and you know we're definitely wearing pink today in honor of this movie because We're, we're not that's a lie TMS's sister's favorite movie is Mean Girls. The first day it was available at their local video store, she rented it. He was bored. He watched it with her. He found the movie totally hilarious, like (laughs) everybody else. And to this day, it is one of his favorite movies of all time. He'll never forget sitting in the basement with her wrapped in blankets and eating popcorn with their mom and watching this movie on VHS. Ugly and Fetch are still in their sibling vernacular to this ugly, day. Ugly, not ugly. And I hope that you guys get to go see the musical because they have one now based on the movie on Broadway. And mm-hmm. it's supposed to be pretty good. My older it sister is. actually saw it and she said she really liked it. So I hope that you get to go see that as like a family event because if this movie is really important to you, then definitely go see the musical. Like Anastasia. Anastasia was really important to um, me and my sisters and it is a musical now on Broadway. And so we want to go see it. Cause life is a road and I wanna keep going. Love is a river I wanna keep flowing. Life is a road now and forever. Wonderful journey. But she, she's dead. I'll be there when the world stops turning. Anastasia died. She I'll be didn't there get out when the, the storm is through. They killed all In the Romanovs. In the end, I wanna be standing definitely, at definitely the dead. beginning with you. Definitely, definitely dead. Sorry, that was a little off pitch, guys. Yeah, you do better. Anyway, so Scott, what are we going to do next week? So we had a plan. I, I want to throw you an audible, though. Oh. This is We're doing this live, guys. This is, at least did not know about this. I was actually kind of excited about what we were doing next no, week. No, I think we're still going to do it, just not next week. Because next week, um, there's a pretty big movie that comes out next Friday. Oh, The Avengers. Yeah. Yeah, that is um, a good, that's a big movie. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty big movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, 10 years of Marvel films. So I thought... A decade? Yeah, it's been 10 years. Wow. Iron Man came out in 2008. Um, so I thought maybe it'd be fun to each pick our favorite of the MCU and do that. Or maybe maybe you want to do MCU or do you just want to do comic book movie? 
Can I make a compromise with you? What's that? I will say we can audible and change that. If, for our discussion question, we can do the Meryl Streep question. You can do the Meryl Streep question. I'm very interested we, to see why all can of do our the Meryl listeners Streep question. are wrong about okay. Meryl Streep. So, yes, we're, we're actually going to change this because we had something planned out and I was actually really excited about it. We're still going to do it. It won't work as well, but it we're still going to get it. It won't work as well because it's not going to be this person's birthday that week. Yeah, we. so, okay, we'll go ahead. We're playing, next week is the birth and slash death. Uh, it's Shakespeare Day. Shakespeare. It's Shakespeare Day is the 23rd yes. of next week. So we were going to do some of our favorite um, Shakespeare adaptations. Um, I still want to do that. Okay. But let's do it. Can I challenge everyone after. to so okay so two things for you guys we're okay so first of all Scott and I are going to do our favorite MCU movies which I don't even know what I'm going to pick off the top of my head so I'm going to have right to now. stall really quick for just right a now. second so um anyways we'll figure out what we're going to watch for that next week and we'll do it real quick but so our discussion question is going to be why do you not like Meryl Streep what is it about her that you agree with me that don't you don't like, like or here's let me re, let me reword ask a different thing if you like meryl streep how can you convince me to like her <laughs> so you're either agreeing with me and we're going to it's have the water errand. cooler moment about why we all don't like her or you can try and convince me to like her what could you say that would possibly change my mind? I'm very interested in this. This is Meryl ridiculous. Streep. You are set in your ways. And is that I'm not okay? Going to can I make that? Can yeah, I, go can for I it. Okay. There's no, I mean, guys, you're, okay. you're, it's not going to happen. We'll have a Meryl Streep week one time so that we can watch Julie and Julie again because I do like that movie. And that maybe they'll get you to finally watch Sophie's Choice. Maybe. Um, okay. And oh gosh, I was going to say something. Oh, so. Because we'll do Shakespeare the following week, because we've already got that planned out. What I would really like to be able to do in order to set Shakespeare week off on the right foot is be able to read a review written in the vernacular of Shakespeare the using his pentameter. using his famous lines. I challenge you to write a review for Val to view using Man, Shakespeare's like famous lines because I had one started and I thought it was really good, but I want to see if you guys can do it. And I'm not going to spoil any of it because like Scott's looking at me like, oh, what is this? So we've got two things for you. Number one, either join me in our dislike for Meryl and let's just all talk about why we don't like her or you can try and convince me what's so great about her to like. Okay. So that's our discussion question for this next week, but also challenging you to write a Shakespeare themed review for our podcast. Yeah, which so that next week to, I can start. Uh, you go on iTunes and leave us a rating or review, and that's where you can put that. Is that okay? Yeah. Can I? Have I you, just I totally you, changed those two things. No, it's fine. Was that too much? Uh. Uh-uh. Okay. Have you stalled enough time to pick your favorite MCU movie? Um, I kind of got to look at the. Okay. Would you like me to go first? Um. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Would you like me to go first? You Yeah, you go first. That way I don't accidentally pick the same one that you pick. Okay. Um, uh, you're going to pick a Captain America one. Why am I even thinking about <laughs> I'm going to pick the same one you're going to pick because you're going to pick something Captain America. I'm going to pick Captain America the Winter exactly. Soldier because that is the best Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. Captain America the Winter Soldier is my pick. Um, I'm going to go Volume 1, Gardens of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. All right, I don't know the how back to back. That. Those movies came out right after each other. Yeah. All right. So that is um, the MCU episode for next week to celebrate Avengers Infinity War, which when that episode will drop will be the day Avengers Infinity War comes out. I don't know why we didn't oh, think of this before. I don't either. Yeah. Um, That's a good idea. It is. You're I so had smart. It, I was, see, the way I'm positioned in our studio, I was looking at uh, the MCU section of my movie shelf and... It just it just it just occurred to me. It's what magical. other comic book movies are there? What other comic book movies are there? There's I mean, a there's lot. So there's so many. I lot. mean, I'm such a comic book lover you love and them. reader. That Paper Girls movie. Man, those Paper Girls. 
All right, that's all we have time for you guys this week. If you like this podcast and what we do here and, and want to check out all of our other shows, you can head on over to dailyplanetfilms.com. Uh, we have, we've got Worm slash We've Got Ward, which is our analysis of the hit web serial. Uh, we do a weekly podcast. Which on, huh? is a superhero thing, right? It is. It is. So yeah. kind of like what we're doing next mm-hmm, week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we've got the Daily Planet podcast, which is our weekly movies, TV, books a podcast where we review different stuff every week just talk about it um what do you see your next episode going to be about next episode is our episode deconstructing the wachowski sisters um so we're going to be uh exploring each one of their movies and trying to figure out what uh what the unifying factor and trying to figure out who they are and what what kind of artists they are Hmm. um last week's episode was talking about arrival i love that movie yeah so check all that out. Um, if you like us and want to support us, you can head on over to patreon.com slash daily planet films. That's patreon.com slash daily planet films. You can donate a dollar a month or whatever else you can afford. And there's a whole bunch of cool uh, bonus stuff you get when like you do what? that. Um, you get to vote for our monthly book club. You get to. What's your book club? Book. This month it is The Moon is a Harsh Mistress. Oh. Um, you get to have access to our Discord chat. You get to go have access to the private Q and A's um, that we do once a month. All kinds of cool stuff. So head on over to patreoncom slash films and check that. We're gonna have to do a vow to view kind of exclusive thing in there somewhere. We'll, that we'll would be fun because I think it would be cool to do like movies that people pick for us to watch. Uh-huh. Maybe like a movie that they think would be like a Scott movie and they think would be an Elise movie. That'd be fun. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't know. Yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll work on that. We'll, but for now, we'll check out patreon.com slash daily planet films. And as Elise said, go to iTunes, leave us a rating, leave us a review, Make write it, it like in iambic pentameter. 